Now, Percy is a little green tank engine who works in the yard of the big station. He is a funny little engine and loves playing jokes. These jokes sometimes get him into trouble. one morning. Hurry up, Gordon! The train's ready! Gordon thought he was late and came puffing out. train and dirty coal trucks. Gordon didn't go back to the shed. He stayed on a siding thinking how to pay Percy out. shed today, squeaked Percy to James. The fat controller will come and see you. James was a conceited engine. Ah, he thought. The fat controller knows I'm a fine engine, ready for anything. He wants me to pull a special train. So James stayed where he was, and nothing his driver and fireman could do would make him move. But the fat controller never came, and the other engines grumbled dreadfully. They had to do James's work as well as their own. <coughs> At last an inspector came. Show a wheel, James, he said crossly. You can't stay here all day. The fat controller told me to stay here, answered James sulkily. He sent a message this morning. He did not, retorted the inspector. How could he? He's away for a week. Oh, said James. Oh. He came quickly out of the shed. Where's Percy? Percy had wisely disappeared. When the fat controller came back, he did see James, and Percy too. Both engines wished he hadn't. James and Gordon wanted to pay Percy out.
that way. One morning, however, he was so excited that he forgot to be careful. I say you engines, he bubbled. I have to take some trucks to Thomas's junction. The fat controller chose me specially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. More likely he wants you out of the way, grunted James. But Gordon gave James a wink. Ah, ah yes, said James. Just so. You were saying, Gordon. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals. But then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. Oh, of course not, he said. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy airily. I know all about signals. And he bustled off importantly. James and Gordon solemnly exchanged winks. Percy was a little worried as he set out. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. I know all about signals. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. He saw a signal just outside the station. Bother, he said. It's a danger! Oh, 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 oh! Screamed the trucks as they bumped into each other. Presently, the signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. He was surprised. Down means go, he thought, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know, it's one of those backing signals. How clever of me to find that out. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. But Percy wouldn't go forward, and his driver had to let him back in order to start at all. I am clever, thought Percy. Even my driver doesn't know about backing signals. He started so suddenly that the truck screamed again. Whoa, Percy, called his driver. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained about signals that point up. Oh dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they come and see us. But he was too late. Gordon was swept by with the express and saw everything. The big engines talked about signals that night. They thought the subject was funny. They laughed a lot. Percy thought they were being very silly. Do you know what? asked Percy. What? grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Silly, said Gordon crossly. Of course I don't know what. If you don't tell me what what is. The fat controller says that the work in the yard is too heavy for me. He's getting a bigger engine to help me. 
Rubbish, put in James. Any engine could do it, he went on grandly. If you worked more and chattered less, this yard would be a sweeter, a better, and a happier place. Percy went off to fetch some coaches. A stupid old signal, he thought. listens to me now. They think I'm a silly little engine. Lord of me about. I'll show them. I'll show them. He puffed as he ran about the yard. But he didn't know how. Things went wrong. The coaches and trucks behaved badly. By the end of the afternoon, he felt tired and unhappy. He brought some coaches to the station and stood panting at the end of the platform. Hello, Percy, said the fat controller. You look tired. Yes, sir. I am, sir. I don't know if I'm standing on my dome or my wheels. Oh, oh, you look the right way up to me, laughed the fat controller. Cheer up. The new engine is bigger than you and can probably do the work alone. Would you like to help build my new harbour at Thomas's junction? Thomas and Toby will help, but I need an engine there all the time. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir said Percy happily. The new engine arrived next morning. What is your name? asked the fat controller kindly. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir. But I like duck better than Montague. Good, said the fat controller. Duck it shall be. Yeah, Percy, come and show duck around. The two engines went off together. At first, the trucks played tricks. soon found that playing tricks on duck was a mistake. The coaches behaved well. Though James, Gordon and Henry did not. They watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine, they whispered. We'll have some fun. Quack! Quack! They wheezed as they passed him. Percy was cross, but Duck took no notice. I'll get tired of it soon, he said. Presently, the three engines began to order duck about. Duck stopped. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? He asked. Yes, they do, answered Percy sadly. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. 
He whispered something. We'll do it tonight. A fat controller had had a good day. There had been no grumbling passengers. All the trains had run to time and Duck had worked well in the yard. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. He had just left the office when he heard an extraordinary noise. Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Henry, Gordon and James were wishing and snorting furiously, while Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Stop that noise, he bellowed. Now, Gordon. They won't let us in, hissed the big engine crossly. Duck, explain this behaviour. Oh, beg pardon, sir, but I'm a Great Western engine. We Great Western engines do our work without fuss. But we are not ordered about by other engines. You, sir, are our controller. We will, of course, move if you order us. But begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I will be glad if you would inform these, uh, engines that we only take orders from you. The three big engines hissed angrily. Silence, snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. They stopped suddenly and the fat controller turned on them. As for you, he thundered, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway, and I give the orders. When Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. so easily. Percy worked hard at the harbour. Toby helped, but sometimes the loads of stone were too heavy, and Percy had to fetch them for himself. Then he would push the trucks along the quay, to where the workmen needed the stone for their building. An airfield was close by, and Percy heard the aeroplane zooming overhead all day. The noisiest of all was a helicopter, which hovered, buzzing like an angry bee. Stupid thing, said Percy. Why can't it go and buzz somewhere else? One day, Percy stopped near the airfield. The helicopter was standing quite close. Hello, said Percy. Who are you? I'm Harold. Who are you? I'm Percy. What whirly great arms you've got. They're nice arms, said Harold, offended. I can hover like a bird. Don't you wish you could hover? Certainly not. I like my rails, thank you. I think railways are slow, said Harold in a bored voice. They're not much use. Quite out of date. 
He whirled his arms and buzzed away. Percy found Toby at the top station, arranging trucks. Say, Toby, he burst out. That Harold, that stuck up whirly bird thing, says I'm slow and out of date. Just let him wait. Oh, I'll show him. He collected his trucks and started off, still fuming. Soon, above the clatter of the trucks, they heard a familiar buzzing. Percy, whispered his driver, there's Harold. He's not far ahead. Let's race him. Yes, let's, said Percy excitedly. And quickly gathering speed, he shot off down the line. The guard's wife took the last two of the limpses. He had just poured out a cup when the van lurched and he spilted down his uniform. He wiped up the mess with his handkerchief and staggered to the front platform. Percy was pounding along. The trucks screamed and swayed while the van rolled and pitched like a ship at sea. Well, I'll be ding dong dang, said the guard. Then he saw Harold buzzing alongside and understood. Go it, Percy, he yelled. You're gaining! Percy had never been allowed to run fast before. He was having the time of his life. Hurry, 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 he panted to the trucks. We don't want to, we don't want to, they grumbled, but it was no use. Percy was bucketing along with flying wheels, and Harold was high and alongside. Shoveled for dear life. While the driver was so excited, he could hardly keep still. Well done, Percy, he shouted. We're gaining! We're going ahead! Oh, good boy! Good boy! Far ahead, a distant signal warned them that the wharf was near. Shut off steam, whistle, beep, beep, beep! Brakes guard, please! Using Percy's brakes too, the driver carefully checked the train's headlong speed. They rolled under the main line and halted smoothly on the wharf. Oh dear, groaned Percy. I'm sure we've lost. The farmer scrambled to the cab roof. We've won! We've won, he shouted, and nearly fell off in his excitement. Harold's still hovering! He's looking for a place to land! Listen, boys, the farmer called. Here's a song for Percy. Said Harold Helicopter to our Percy, you are slow. Your railway is out of date and not much use, you know. But Percy with his stone trucks did the trip in record time. And we beat that helicopter on our old branch line. The driver and guard soon caught the tune, and so did the workman on the quay. Percy loved it. Oh, thank you, he said. He liked the last line best of all. A mob of excited children poured out of Annie and Clarabelle one morning and raced down to the beach. There's the Vicar's Sunday School, explained Thomas. I'm busy this evening, but the station master says I can ask you to take them home. 
Of course I will, promised Percy. The children had a lovely day, but at tea time it got very hot. Dark clouds loomed overhead, then came lightning, thunder and rain. The children only just managed to reach shelter before the deluge began. Annie and Clarabelle stood at the platform. The children scrambled in. Can we go home please, Station Master? asked the vicar. The Station Master called Percy. Take the children home quickly please, he ordered. The rain streamed down on Percy's boiler. Ugh! He shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Then he remembered. A promise is a promise, he told himself. So, here goes. The driver was anxious. The river was rising fast. It foamed and swirled fiercely, threatening to flood the country any minute. The rain beat in Percy's face. I wish I could see! I wish I could see! He complained. They left a cutting and found themselves in water. Oh, my wheels! shivered Percy. It's cold! But he struggled on. Whoosh! He hissed. It's sloshing my fire! They stopped and backed the coaches to the cutting and waited while the guard found the telephone. He returned looking gloomy. We couldn't go back if we wanted, he said. The bridge near the junction is down. The farman went to the guard's van carrying a hatchet. Hello, said the guard. You look fierce. I want some dry wood for Percy's fire, please. They broke up some boxes, but that did not satisfy the farman. I'll have some of your floorboards, he said. What, my nice floor, grumbled the guard. I only swept it this morning. But he found a hatchet and helped. Soon they had plenty of wood stored in Percy's bunker. His fire burnt well now. He felt warm and comfortable again. Oh dear, thought Percy sadly. Harold's come to laugh at me. Something thudded on Percy's boiler. Ah! He exclaimed in a muffled voice. That's very too bad! It is frozen! His driver unwound a parachute from Percy's indignant front. Harold isn't throwing things at you, we laugh. He's dropping hot drinks for us. They all had a drink of cocoa and helped get up. Percy had steam up now. Thank you, Harold! He whistled. Come on, let's
water lapped his wheels. He shivered. It crept up and up and up. It reached his past pan, then it sloshed to his fire. Oosh! Percy was losing steam, but he plunged bravely on. I promised! He panted. I promised! They piled his fire high with wood and managed to keep it steaming. Oh, I must do it! He gasped. I must! I must! I must! He made a last great effort and stood exhausted but triumphant on rails to clear the flood. He rested to get steam back. Then brought the train home. Three cheers for Percy, called the vicar, and the children nearly raised the roof. The fat controller arrived in Harold. First he thanked the men. Harold told me you were a wizard, Percy. He says he can beat you at some things, Percy snorted, but not at being a submarine, he chuckled. I don't know what you've both been playing at, and I won't ask, but I do know that you're a really useful engine. Oh, sir, Mr. Percy happily.